here is an inside look at one of my dividend stock portfolios. This single portfolio of mine earns me around $23,372 every single year. And if you divide that number by 12, I earn around $1,900 to $2,000 every single month. I have other portfolios and investments and altogether, I currently earn around $6,000 per month in pure passive income. But before we go through the rest of my portfolio and I show you some of my favorite stocks and ETFs that I hold in this income producing portfolio, I want to share some of the things that I think are most important when building a dividend stock portfolio like this one. When building a long-term dividend stock portfolio, one of the main things that I wish I would have known a lot earlier and that I take very seriously is researching different stocks and ETFs. Before investing into any stock or ETF, it is important to do thorough research. Look for companies with a history of paying steady dividends and also hopefully increasing their dividends over time. Also look for companies that have solid financials. You don't need to be an absolute expert to look through balance sheets and understand how to read the basics when it comes to a company and how they're sitting financially. Check the company's dividend yield, the company's payout ratio, and of course, if a company or ETF has in fact maybe cut their dividend in the past. And if they did cut the dividend, make sure to figure out why that was. Analyzing stocks and ETFs can be overwhelming at first. And I'm not going to lie, at first I didn't know where to start. But over time, playing around on free sites like SeekingAlpha.com and digging deeper into stocks and ETFs and analyzing all the information, you're going to understand over time what might make a stock or ETF a good investment and what you're going to want to stay away from. The next thing that's very important when building a large long-term dividend stock portfolio is diversification. Now, this is something that I took very seriously right off the bat. In my large portfolio, at one point, I think I had almost 80 single stocks in it, which I later on trimmed away. I think right now I have between 40 and 45 different holdings, and a lot of those also being ETFs. Diversification, not putting all your eggs in one basket, because let me tell you, there's going to be times in the future where a stock or an ETF have an issue. Whether it's the unfortunate dividend cuts or maybe something worse, you're more than likely better off having a small piece of a pie than an entire pile together. Diversification can also help minimize risk and increase potential returns. Avoid investing too heavily in one particular sector, company, stock, ETF, as of course this could leave you more vulnerable to volatility and potential losses. The next thing to watch out for is the yield versus growth conversation. Consider the trade-off between dividend yield and dividend growth. High yield stocks may offer attractive income in the short term, but their dividends may be less secure in the long term. Alternatively, companies with a lower starting yield but a strong growth prospect may offer greater potential for long-term capital appreciation. So there's two different camps here. There's the people that swear by investing into things like JEPI, like Q-Yield, all those things out there that have around 10% or higher starting dividend yield. And there's also the dividend growth investors that purchase things like Pepsi, that purchase things like Walmart, or ETFs like SCHD. Now my take on this is that there's going to be a strategy for every single investor, and it's hard to say that one strategy beats all. Everyone has their own situation. Some people might be okay with the longer term trade-off for earning income faster, but when it comes to yield versus growth, I go back to diversification. Having some high yield, some low yield, and everything else in between in my portfolio is what you guys are going to see in a second here. The final thing to consider when you're building your long-term dividend stock portfolio is reinvestment. Consider if you're going to be able to reinvest your dividends and allow them to truly compound over time. If you do hold stocks and ETFs that are going to be raising their dividends, then the portfolio will truly be compounding on its own without you adding another penny into it. But at the same time, if you are able to continuously add more to the portfolio by reinvesting your dividends or even adding in more outside capital, this is going to make the portfolio grow faster and potentially generate greater income in the future. So now that you have an idea of all the things that I find very important when building a strong long-term dividend stock portfolio, let's look through one of my dividend stock portfolios. This portfolio's value is just under $500,000, and my largest holding by far is 1,000 shares of Apple. These 1,000 shares of Apple cost me right around $120,000, I think. And of course, I did not purchase all these shares at once. This portfolio has been years and years in progress. The estimated annual dividends just from those 1,000 Apple shares is $920. 
And keep in mind, Apple has a relatively low dividend yield. So like we were talking about a second ago, this portfolio is going to be made up of things that yield very low, but also have a potential for much more capital appreciation. And there's going to be some names in here, like you see right here, Jeppy, that aren't really going to appreciate all that much compared to something like Apple, but are giving me around a 9% dividend yield as of the last declared dividend. So scrolling through this portfolio, some of my top holdings are things like Apple, like Realty Income, Verizon, Jeppy, Devo, we have a BlackRock fund, some Q yield, some more single stocks, things like EPD, JP Morgan, Coca-Cola. Lots of names in this list should be pretty familiar to most of you guys if you are interested in dividend investing. Now, the cool thing about building a long-term portfolio is that the way that I like to think about it, it's an art project. It's a sculpture that's never truly finished. You can constantly keep reworking the portfolio, buying things, selling things, rebalancing things, and doing more research. The cool thing is, is that the long-term goal is to build a bulletproof portfolio that can someday pay for all of your bills, all of your hopes and dreams and more. But the great part about this is, is it doesn't have to happen overnight. This single portfolio of mine has definitely been a work in progress as all of my different investments have been. But over time, if you hone in on the skills, do the research, make sure to focus on diversification and have a long-term strategy and plan in place, you are going to be able to build a long-term bulletproof dividend portfolio. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this from me, make sure to please drop a like on the video and also subscribe for more. Thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.